Hey, hey, we are in Northampton once again, uh, spare time bowling. We're gonna do a fun little test today to explain the differences between uh, asymmetric cores and symmetric cores. All right, hopefully the sound doesn't get drowned out too much by uh, uh, cosmic bowling uh, music time. So what we're taking is uh, two similar but different balls. So we're taking out the pair of the realities, Duca and Dream, solid, and then we're gonna pair it up against Hammer Raw, another solid, Asim versus Sim, and then we're gonna have the Pearl Duca, the altered reality versus Pearl Hustle, uh, which is a symmetrical, very long, uh, this is a stronger ball uh, than this one, uh, Nails is stronger than Trav. Um, so yeah, so hopefully we'll get some good comparisons out of this. All right, so let's check these guys out on bowling this month. Of course, my favorite data-driven bowling ball website. Um, I'm not presented by them or sponsored or anything like that. I just think it's a great uh, product that people can check out and get information on bowling balls. So we're comparing the altered reality against the hustle uh, because of course they're both pearls. And then we have the regular reality and the hammer raw uh, because those are both solids. Uh, as you can see, the box finish on the reality, uh, the alter reality, and the the hustle are basically the same. And there's a slight difference between the glow reality and the hammer raw, but you know, it, it's just one of those things. It, it, I couldn't exactly. I don't have a ball that is exactly mirrored of the other, but I don't. I don't think it's, it'll throw off the comparison that much. Um, but what what we're really looking at right here is um, the pearl asim versus the pearl sim and the solid ASIM versus the solid SIM. And just taking a look at their numbers, we of course see that uh, the realities both have the same number because they have the same cores, um, but they, they, just, they act totally different because cover stock is really that much more of an important difference. And we'll see that in the videos. And then the, the hammer raw and the rotor gripper are, are kind of, you know, kind of close, but different of, as well. So, um, Sometimes, you know, I think it's easy to get lost in what, what RG versus diff means. So just to, to boil it down, this is, this is where I tend to go to, bowling.com, and they, they have a, a good explainer. But for the most part, RG has to do with the timing of, of a hook, of the break. So it's going to start earlier versus starting later, the higher the RG. And then with diff, diff is about flare potential. And because of the flare potential, that means how much dry ball is going to be hitting the lane. So it has to do with the hook potential of the ball. So RG timing, uh, differential, uh, uh, potential of hook and stuff like that. That's that's how I try to think about it. So uh, again, two four nine. Are the so the kind of earlier uh, uh, RGs for the realities versus the the. Um, the symmetrical balls, and then the diff is going to be higher, so much higher hook potential starting earlier, um, and with the hustle being the, the lowest one, and the hammer raw kind of sitting in the middle, uh, with you know pretty similar RG between the the two symmetricals. Uh, just on on this handy graph again, I, I, this this graph really puts a lot of things in potential for me. Of course, it's not uh, it's not as if this is always perfect. I noticed some differences myself. But so um, here we see the, the hustle is going to kind of be the longest with the lowest hook. That makes sense with the numbers. Uh, the raw kind of sitting in the middle there. Uh, middle length, middle hook, kind of the, the, you know, the, um, the most versatile ball. Anyone who's throwing a hammer raw kind of knows that. Then we have the altered reality. Uh, good length, great hook. That's, you know, we saw that in the last video with, with Duca going down the lane and then the global reality uh, monster hook starts early everyone says it has snow tires and, and this kind of proves the point of it but what I really want to get to is these cores right so looking at the websites here's here's reality and we don't have to look at the alter reality because the same thing but it has this this massive massive core that kind of just has a corner taken out of it so the the asymmetricness of it is not as aggravated as you may see with other balls uh, which which have kind of like a, a, a big big kind of side sticking out I think I think a famously known one is the gas mass of the hammers uh, uh, you know the hammer spiders and stuff but so 
but it's a huge, huge, huge block with, with a side. I think, you know, that's why it moves early. That's why it moves a lot. It's, it's just a pretty massive weight in the middle. The hammer black, um, which, you know, is, is symmetrical. Um, let's see if we can find the, the there are the core, uh, kind of like a popsicle, uh, you know, nothing, nothing really aggravating, nothing sticking out to the side, but you know, th this is what tends to be, uh, what, what, what drives the hammer and, and, you know, again, it's just interesting because it could be a little lopsided if you want to take a, take a closer look at it. And then the wrap, um, we look at its core kind of tight, you know, not, 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 nothing too out one way or the other. And as you can notice, it, it isn't even as long necessarily as we saw with the hammer raw. So just, just a couple of interesting things to, to keep in mind as we look at this stuff. All right. So this, this video actually, um, kind of is, is going to be a little aggravated, uh, at, at, uh, a couple of very specific things. And so this is actually from the last video with Duca. And I just wanted to show how in the last lane conditions, you know, the, the ball pops over um, 20 or so, and then it has that monstrous break at the end. That was kind of the really, really fun part of, of watching these Duca videos uh, and doing them and stuff. Now, since I made this video and now, Something happened at the bowling alley that I go to that, that I shoot these videos at where they probably fixed or changed something in their oiling machine. And so this condition does not exist anymore. I cannot throw any ball in this sort of way in these videos because it just doesn't exist. And, and it's something to keep in mind how being a versatile bowler matters so much. I, I think one of the things you can notice with lots of the league bowlers that you may bowl around is there's always complaints about the machine not being right and they can't stand in their spot and something is wrong and there's not enough this and there's not enough that but becoming great and really good at bowling means this doesn't matter and you can solve the lanes right so so you know not not a huge thing uh, necessarily for this video but just something I want to point out that like it's okay for for conditions to change just you know adjust your line all right so so this first shot from uh, from yesterday when I was filming these things uh, is, is so you know <laughs> emblematic of, of how things are, are different now um, I just want to point out that instead of starting, uh, you know, I, I think for those those Duke of videos, I was closer to uh, 30, but right now you can see my feet uh, starting point around 26. So on the ball release, um, I'm going to go more up the third arrow, right? So, so right around uh, 14 or so, somewhere around there, and the ball just goes. And, and, and... You know, if you happen to play, uh, pay close attention to my, my Instagram, you know I've been having a really, really hard time in league the last week, and this is why. I, because I could not get the ball to come around. Now, what was great about having a really good practice session yesterday, and, and I bowled probably six games for a few hours, it, it really got things back and put things back in order. So, let's just keep in mind as we watch this that the lane conditions were a little weird, um, and, and we'll just sort of go from there. But so, okay, so this is just the first shot with reality that I wanted to, to get out there. Um, again, the ball slides. Now, um, just to compare, I wanna show also a shot with the hammer raw. And this, this is, this was very, this was very interesting to notice myself, even though I, I knew what I was doing and, and I knew, you know, the lane condition, I knew I was making these videos. But what really, really, really caught my attention while I was making them is why did that happen versus the ASIM not doing that sort of action that we see right here, right? Like, like, it, like it grabbed the lane and while wow, reality didn't. And, and this wasn't really just um, one shot with uh, a difference. So here, here's reality also. Um, it's going a little uh, flat here as well. But so, you know, a little bit further out just doesn't, doesn't turn the corner. It just doesn't turn the corner. 
I was so confused by this, I actually reached out to Dennis Bissonnette, my friend, who, uh, you know, is a NEBA champ and kind of one of the 25-year-old uh, up-and-coming bowler and, and one of the guys who I go to for advice. And, and I said, why is this happening? Well, when I throw a hammer raw that's symmetrical, it's doing this. Kind of out, and, and it, it comes right back in the way it's supposed to. Um, now, the reality also had its own moment like that as well. So I don't want to just say that the reality kept sliding out, right? That, that's not really the point. Um, this ball kind of hits out at that out angle too and comes back in. But again, it just, like, we're, it's right around here that it's making it. And it doesn't quite come in. I mean, yes, this is a strike. But there was, see how, how far the one kicks out. That's really high potential to have left that seven pin. Right, the, the, and as you can see here, the, the ball goes way to the right. Because that's, that's how kind of low in the pocket it's hitting. Um, so just to throw this out there, my, my starting impression when people talk about asymmetrical balls versus symmetrical balls is that an asym is, is stronger, right? So it's always that it's stronger. And, and the impression I've always gotten is that it's going to break harder. It's going to hook harder. Even look at those numbers that we were looking at from bowling this month. That, that you know, the, the hook for a reality should be better than a, than a hammer black. This is this was really confounding to me. I, honestly, I was I was very confused. And here I'll show even one. All right, just had some slight technical difficulties there. <laughs> but okay, so like um, so just to go back to that first video that I showed of um of the reality. Notice again that you would think that this ball was pulled, and even with that line, it would have broken at some point. So this is what's happening, and this is what's so fascinating, is that a solid is going to grab earlier than, than other finishes, right? A solid will grab earlier, and as we all know, the cover stock often makes much more of a difference than, a, than most other factors, like the core and everything like that. But because the reality grabs so early, but because that inside line is sort of too wet, it's, it's losing all of its juice. So, so really, like, um, the, the reality, by the time it hits where it should be breaking, it's, it's just not going to have anything left. It's just going to lose all of its energy. Uh, as opposed to the Hammer Black, which will still kind of have something in the tank. And it'll, it'll hit the point that it's supposed to break back in, at, and and it, and it will have something to to grab onto, right? That's that's, and and it's really something important to keep in mind because sometimes I know for myself that if I'm feeling like I'm not getting the lane good enough, I think okay, let me go to a ball that should be more grabby, that should be that should have a higher hook potential, that should have those snow tires. But sometimes it's a matter of when is the energy released. And, and this, is, this is a tough question. And this is, this is really something that uh, I know I'm gonna have to get my head around a lot more. Uh, something I also wanted to show was, um, was the, the track lines of, of these balls, right? Because that's sort of like what is sold as being the most important thing, the flare potential. That, that happens with an asim. An asim, it, while it's standing a ball up or, or, or dropping, you know, picking a ball down because of the off centered nature of, you know, like gyroscopic physics and blah, 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 whatever, that the, the you know, the, 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 the gaps between the roll should be much larger. So there's, so there's less oil touching the dry parts of the ball. Rather, the the dry parts of the ball are, are going over different parts of the oil. So, so it, it keeps getting more and more grip. But 
as you can see, this is, you know, probably about an inch or so apart. The Hammer Raw, not all, maybe a little bit tighter, but really not that much different. I mean, they're, they're pretty close together. So, so I, I would say out of these, these, uh, you know, kind of like tests, I really personally noticed that in this situation where you have lanes that maybe there's a lot of push down, maybe there's too much oil in the middle and it's about coming back when it does it, probably an ASIM solid isn't going to get the ball, uh, isn't going to get the job done nearly as good as a uh, symmetrical solid. Okay, now the, the next ones are going to be for the pearls. And of course, for the pearls, I almost noticed, it, not almost, but it, it was basically the exact opposite. So this is Duca, the, the Alter Reality. <clears throat> Again, notice my feet are way to the left. I tend to move three boards to the left when I drop down to Duca because of how long it slides and, and you know, that, that massive breaking point. So with, um, with um, you know, with the, the hammer, and uh, and reality, see, I'm closer on 26, but for Duca, closer to like 29. So this one gets down lane, right? That that almost that same line, uh, and, and comes around. Now this was this was long, which is which is the problem with a pearl, right? Especially when the lane conditions are, are this way. And even though there's that little jump, you can see catches you know the right side of a 15 sort of like a, four, a 14 line and then breaks too late right it's breaking about here right as opposed to um here, let's kind of pause that there so we'll have right about there is when the break happens and let's see for um for nails right around there right So look how much further Dark Knight is down the lane before it starts breaking, as opposed to Nails, which is probably a good, you know, foot or so earlier. Again, just, just the difference between the, the two cover sucks and whatnot. So so that was that was the first shot on Dark Knight. Um, and then let's look at the the hustle. Now, also I wanna I wanna kind of footnote this. I have not been throwing the ball well. I just hadn't been. It's it's been a, a problem for the last week, and probably part of the way through throwing uh, nails is when I sort of started re-getting a, a couple things. So, so by the time I went to Duca and then to Trav, the hustle, I, I kind of got my mojo back, and I was getting more hand than the ball and things like that. So, so maybe just by that action, it sort of got a lot better. But so. Um, let me show you one uh, tight line that, that Duca went through. Um, this is a little bit closer to um, uh, the, you know, that, that sort of 15-ish uh, area. And you'll notice too, I moved my feet, my feet are about two or three more boards to the right, basically going back to where the solids were. Um, so this ball heads down, uh, you know, basically third arrow to the left of it, a little tight. Um, but the movement is smooth, right? It's smooth. It breaks in. This, this is like a, this is a fine line. It's really not something I'd want to be throwing normally. I, I like getting a bit more angle into the ball. I, I just think it's tough to, to get the pocket nicely, consistently, and have like room for error at this kind of line. But it worked, and and, and it's fine. Um, but so Duca, you know, Duca ha handled it nicely. Of course, I, I was bowling better, so you know, sometimes, as as Rob Green loves to say, it's about making better shots. Okay, so let me let me show the first shot from the hustle for comparison. So hustle again is is the weaker, the symmetrical of the of the pearls. Um, again, the the my feet in that in that uh you know that 26 board uh starting place so i i didn't move back out again but i, I wouldn't with the hustle because it's such a weaker ball and goes out and comes back in nicely oh 710 that's horrible i just i had to keep that in there it's, it's, it's just so funny when you hit a pocket 710 but like that line really was wasn't that bad it, it kind of reacted very well you know like like now 
this line is, is good, and it goes right in the pocket, 710, I mean, pocket 710, you can't really do much about that, it's just bad luck sometimes, but, um, what I wanted to show, this is a very good comparison of, you know, kind of going down, uh, you know, 10, you know, around 11 to 12 there, breaking at about 5, uh, which was really a, the line for this kind of weird, overly oiled, uh, push down kind of lane conditions, what was getting the ball out to 5. Um, which I personally don't necessarily like. Uh, I, I, I like it being closer to eight. Uh, I feel like when the ball starts getting out there and breaking that late, it's just high potential for tens and sevens. I mean, it's just really high potential for it. So, but um, to compare it to Duca, the ASIM, um, and again, you know, pretty, pretty similar foot position, and this one's going to head out too, but... Almost the same way with the solids, kind of didn't didn't turn the corner that good. Okay, now, but it's totally different, right? Because so, like, let's look here. Like with uh, Duca, it kind of breaks right there. Oop. Let's get that kind of paused over here. Okay, so kind of turn there, and then let's um. Let me see if I can find... Okay, so here's a video from reality. Uh, from, you know, regular reality. From Dream. And this one basically is a very similar line to uh, Duca. And goes out like that. And again, just didn't turn the corner. Just, just didn't get there. Now, let's take a look about where it's breaking. Right about here. Right, kind of starts turning the corner right about there. And again, sorry about the weird angle comparison, but um, you can see a little bit earlier with the solid, but, uh, and, and I think that was the difference with Duca sliding out as opposed to uh, Dream. I think Dream and a solid, again, it, it, it doesn't have the energy to turn that corner. But with, with Duca, it, it, it did turn the corner, it just did it too late and kind of ended up a bit too uh, low, low in the pocket. So, I wanted to show this because this kind of is the perfect example of, of the concept that I call the box of oil that I was taught by uh, Cliff Wheelock. So, this shot is, is literally the same shot as, that, as the last shot with Duca. Basically the same exact line. The difference is that with my eyes, I I moved my uh, my visual point up a lot more. So as opposed to breaking, um, as opposed to breaking here, about here, it broke a little bit earlier, right? So it just broke a little bit earlier. And even and and with that same motion, it came through the pocket. So sometimes you don't have to move boards, you don't have to change speed, you don't have to do anything. You just need to change your visual breakpoint with with where you throw the ball. So so anyway, so not not to disregard um, uh, you know the hustle because I, I know we're trying to compare symmetrical and asymmetrical chords, but I, I think it's important to note. Uh, again, just just where th this cover stock really is making a huge impact, and and almost like killing out a ball, and how you can you know look at different things and take in different factors. And I think, of course, like there's no there's usually no magic bullet. There can be magic bullets, but sometimes it's it's a matter of having three or four different factors you can look at when you're when you're trying to read something and and that doesn't quite work. So what I wanted to compare those shots to now is with the hustle and of course every metric for the hustle was lower than uh than the two realities of course i mean this is this is a ball with a smaller core and lower rg and and the diff is blah blah and yet it came across the head and where the other balls could not so again th this is sort of like defeating this this idea that uh, uh, that a asymmetrical core is just better than a symmetrical core. 
So that that's really one of the biggest takeaways that I had. Um, I think generally uh, uh, ASIM offers more control and and is a better go-to ball. It's a better ball to start with and, and you know drop down to. But sometimes it really does make a difference in like a negative way where where it isn't just that an ASIM will be stronger or a, a solid would be stronger. It's that sometimes you can grab the ball with with no hook potential and it's a symmetrical or whatever and it's gonna get the job done better even though the lanes are oilier, even though the lanes are longer, even though these things because the nature of a symmetrical and how it builds up its energy and when it releases it could fit the lane better. And just to go over the tracks for uh, these two. So here's a track for uh, for Duca. Again, like, uh, you know, the beauty of pearls is they kind of just glide over. So I couldn't get a ton of track marks, but you can see that the spacing is kind of big and this is early in the roll, uh, you know, when, when the flare starts to happen. So, so these probably uh, uh, would be a lot more spaced out if I could have gotten a clearer picture elsewhere. And then with the hustle, very, very, very apparent that the, the track lays a lot closer. Now, but of course, not totally on top of itself, which is which is good to note as well. So, so yeah. So, anyways, that was the that was the comparison. I would say, uh, in the long run, I'm going to kind of question myself a little bit more when lanes aren't reading right, and should I and and just defaulting to go to the stronger ball, and sometimes it's better to go to the quote unquote weaker ball. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, thanks for checking out the video, everyone. Take care. Bye.